Hey guys, so I received the question, do you know about rotation matrices? I'd like to understand them a bit better and was wondering if you could offer some insight into how you can apply operations with these and maybe an example. To begin, let's first define what a rotation matrix is. A rotation matrix describes the rotation of an object in 3D space. If you already know about coordinate system transformation matrices, you can think of these as two concepts being the exact opposite of each other. While a transformation matrix describes the rotation of a coordinate system around a fixed object, a rotation matrix describes the rotation of an object in a fixed coordinate system, which in our case is a vector as it has both magnitude and direction. Both types of matrices are transposes of the other, meaning that one matrix is flipped over its diagonal to produce the other, switching the row and column indices of the matrix. But let's go back to solving rotational matrices. Let's say we want to rotate a point on our plane, or coordinate system, using rotational matrices. You might have seen an equation like this, often associated with such problems. This equation describes the rotational matrix in two dimensions. This matrix is supposed to help you find the solution of rotating a point with coordinates of x0 and y0, represented in the column notation of a vector, around the angle of phi. But how is this matrix made, and what does solving such an equation look like? So, if we were to graph this point of x0 and y0 on a plane, we can see that we created a vector that reaches this point. And note that this vector can be represented in various other formats. If you remember from my previous video about solving equations of complex numbers in polar form, we can denote this line here as r, which represents the distance from our origin, or the length of this vector x0 and y0, with our vector containing theta, which is the angle made by our vector with the x-axis. Rotating our point x0 and y0 by another angle, in this case the angle of phi, gets us this new vector with a different point, which we will denote as x1 and y1. Note that our matrix is supposed to help us figure out what these new coordinates are going to be, based on the angle that we have to rotate our original point by, and so to solve for that matrix, which helps us define this point, we must use some trigonometry. Remember again that the length of this vector can be represented with the value of x, and that the height of our vector is represented with y. Knowing our SOHCAHTOA rules, we can represent these values in a trigonometric expression, with x0 equaling r cosine theta, and y0 equaling r sine theta. Now, x1 equals r cosine theta plus phi, because the new angle of a rotated point has to include the origin angle plus whatever new angle we rotate it by, and y1 equaling y sine theta plus phi. Using addition and subtraction trigonometric identities, we can simplify these x1 and y1 equations even more. We see that for the x1 equation, we can apply our addition identity rule with cosine a plus b to get r cosine theta cosine phi minus r sine theta sine phi. Note now how we found r cosine of theta to equal x0 and r sine of theta to equal y0, so we can substitute in these values into our equations to get the following relationships. We can now repeat the same process with the y1 equation, except this time we apply our addition identity rule with sine a plus b to get r sine theta plus cosine phi plus r cosine theta sine phi. Again, we can substitute in our values of x0 and y0 into these equations. These equations that we just derived are actually the matrix equivalent of the rotational matrix definition that we had defined before. Using matrix arithmetic, we can see how if we set this equation equal to x1 and y1, we can solve for their equations since we simply multiply it across and down. Now let's do an example doing an operation with rotational matrices. Take the point phi 4 and rotate it counterclockwise by 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians, and find the new coordinates of this point. To solve this equation, we would substitute in 90 degrees for the variable phi and multiply that matrix by the coordinates given to us in the problem. The product gives us the new coordinates after rotation, which is negative 4, 5. This can be represented graphically as well, with our coordinates 5, 4 rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise to create a new vector that points to the coordinates negative 4, 5. I hope this video helped you to learn more about rotational matrices and their applications in a 2D example problem.